Yo, welcome to a video that's been long overdue. Um, some of you know I've done this on stream before, but I'm gonna give a short masterclass on how to DJ like a hardstyle DJ. Made possible by Corsair. They uh, provided me with awesome headphones. I'm gonna be using them to show you how to mix. And um, I'll tell you a little story first, because uh, the first time I actually played, um, I had no experience whatsoever. I was just making music and I got my first booking on Fantasy Island 2012. And I was a trio back then and Michael and Kevin both couldn't make it. And I was mainly the producer. So one of them said, why don't you just go? Cause we really need to do this booking. And it kind of stressed me out because I had no idea how to navigate my way around the deck. And I spent all night the night before on looking at pictures of a CDJ like this and the mixer and try to figure out what kind of functions you use and like what everything does. I got by, but I don't recommend doing it like that. I recommend checking out some actual pros on how they mix. And I, uh, I'm going to do a short overview of everything, but if you really want to be in depth, you can always check uh, guys like Cripsis. Uh, he does like a DJ school, I think. So basically in front of me is a pioneer mixer. It's not, not the normal ones you see on a party, but this has literally most of the features, everything else will have. I'm going to go over a little bit of the most important buttons on the deck. You have the faders here, of course, uh, it's the volume It's really obvious. It does the volume, basic. There's the Q button, which means you can pre-select a track from your USB. Be sure to prepare your sets. You just load one up like this and it shows up and you can press play. So when you're playing and you press the Q button, this happens, uh, which also happened a couple of times when I was actually in a big festival. Don't do that while you're playing because it's only meant to check what you're going to mix into. So I'm going to show that how to mix an actual track a little bit. And in the meantime, I'll show you guys what I do and how I do it. Because there's a couple of ways you can do it. And there's like a couple of things you shouldn't do. Uh, basically, let's take. Take. Well, we had a great tune lined up here. So this right here is the tempo slider. So if you go up, it pitches down. The other way, it pitches up. And it says right here, 150 BPM. But back in the day, we had to actually listen to what the BPM was because everything had separate BPMs. But hard style is mostly 150 or 155, you know? So. Okay, so while this track is playing, normally what I do, I go, I figure out what track do I want to play next. Would be nice if it loaded. <laughs> All right, so I selected a different track now. Without any wrong one. Okay, so this next next track is says it's 155 BPM. So we're gonna make sure you're not gonna be mixing out of but we're gonna make sure when you when you start mixing it doesn't sound like this. Cause when you play something that is on a on a different BPM, you get this. It doesn't sound good. That's, and it's because they're out of sync. So what you're gonna do is make sure they're at the same BPM. So this one says, is it 150? We're gonna trust, trust record box on this, but if you know your tracks, if you prepare, you kind of know what tune you're playing. So, okay, we're gonna make sure this other track, which is on 155, we're gonna make sure it's on 150 as well. And 
these days it's really handy to have Recordbox tell you what BPM it is. So if we do it on minus 330, it says 150. That's great. Now they're in sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard this before. All right, so mainly the main thing in hardstyle is it's not hard to mix hardstyle because all of the mix intros are basically the same, which is always 16 bars. And you count the bars by one, two, three, four, and that 16 times. So this drop, for example, you can just count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and this 16 times. And that's mostly what all the other mix intros are as well. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. So I'm gonna leave all the faders open right now so you can hear what's happening when I press play on the correct time. Hopefully. And really important is to know the tracks you're playing. Because if you don't know and there's like a, something else happening that you're not used to, it can throw you off. So be sure you know the tunes. So as you can hear, they're kind of in sync, but we're going to use the jog wheel. So now they're actually in sync. Never mind, it's a little bit out of sync. So really important thing what I did there is I removed all the low end from the tune that I was mixing into, because otherwise you get the subwoofers trying to decide what low end you play, so you get a lot of rumbling. So don't do that. And when you actually have the tune come in, you put the low up. That's so. It's kind of easy. So these are the kind of the basics on how to mix a hardstyle tune. It's not difficult at all, but you just really have to Try, of galaxies. try more, Changing practice. I still don't think I'm the, the best DJ, creation. so... But I get by. All right, let's go over some of the basics of um, this bit right here. The main, the mid part, the, the, I think it's a mixer. It's, it's the mixer console. It has a volume slider which is just does what it says. And we have an EQ right here, which is really helpful when you're uh, mixing, because if you want to have a track really suddenly come in, you take out some of the frequencies of the tune you're mixing in. These buttons right here are the Q buttons, and these are really important because you don't want the crowd to hear you doing this. So when you select a track and you do this, which is normally what you do to check if a track is ready to play. You, you don't want the crowd to hear that. So you press this Q button and it will enable the output to the headphone. So right now I hear it, but the crowd doesn't. So when you have a tune playing, so when you have the tune playing, you can secretly queue up the next track. So it's really important to know what tracks you're playing because they're all, they all have a structure and they have like, normally they have like a mid part, a main part, a break. You don't want to be mixing in a break because that, that would sound like, like this. Un un unless you're doing something creative, you don't want to do this. Right? The pillars of creation. So that's important to know the songs you're playing. And it's like sometimes when you do back to back, it's, it's hard, but this is what experience does so you can adapt and uh, figure it out on the way. But preparation is, an, is a big step because that's what saved me when I did my first gig on Fantasy Island. I knew all my tunes that I was playing. I was playing my own tunes and I knew when to transition. So it's really, really important to feel 
where the next track should go. And sometimes like when you're standing in front of a crowd, uh, you kind of have to check the crowd as well, which is a big aspect of DJing that some people don't get. Because if you're like playing really raw, really hard music, and it's 12 o'clock midday, just starting, people are like, man, what's happening? So you also have to be like sure what to do with a crowd. So don't do that, by the way, when you're opening, don't play 160 BPM raw, please. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's give you guys an example on how to uh, be a little more creative with your mixes. You have to be a little bit skilled with uh, cutting and uh, editing some of the tunes, because that's what I do to make my set special. I uh, sometimes make edits of other people's music, so I have something special that someone else does, doesn't have, so. Y'all know this tune. I did a little edit of this. Oh. So a little creative mixing. I'm gonna skip ahead. So I had prepared the other track, which is the my Stampa remix for the Prophets. I prepared something that you so you can have a little different transition that you normally have, because normally you just mix from the one track into the other. But this time we're gonna be playing them together. So this is what that sounds like. You guys hear two tunes playing at the same time. So this is like short variations you can do with hearts. Like hearts are back in the days used to be a, a, a lot longer in length and then they had like a long mid, mid intros and you can mix, uh, keep, keep on mixing and like switching in other tracks because the structures were really different. But nowadays, these, like these days, we only have 16 bar mid intros. If you're lucky, like some of, uh, some of the DJs I know just send me radio edits, which is really stupid when you actually want to mix, mix the tune in somewhere because you have to make a really weird transition. You have to open up the reverb, which I'll show you guys in a bit, the effects. But it's, it's these days it's been made a little bit more easy for uh, starting DJs to DJ hard stuff. Because back in the day we had like two minute mid intros where you could be really creative with other tracks that are just weird structures and you could keep switching back and forth and like change the kick from one tune into the other. But that's the old days, so. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go over some of the effects because you hear me using the flangler, flang, flangler. I, I, don't, I don't know how people never figured it out, but it's basically this annoying sound. Um, let's see. This is the this is the flangler, and normally. When there's like a drop coming to have like a little extra riser in it, this is what I put up. Well, that went well. I'm a pro DJ, guys, trust me. All right, let's try that again. So when, um, when it's building up, this is what you hear me using a lot because it adds a little bit of that extra, you know. The drop is coming. Then the filter. 
which does what it says it does. It's filtering. Trans, I never use. I don't even know what it is, but... Oh, okay, that. So, this is a thing I use a lot. The reverb. So if you want to just end, end the tune... There's a transition. No one hear the thing. And you can press play in the radio edit that we spoke of before. So more more effects. Um, a lot of uh, raw raw DJs love to use this one. Um, let's put up something raw because we can. This video can't be monetized, by the way. All these labels leeching, huh? All right. So another thing, instead of the flangler, flangler, the echo. You can use this to, to create this. Same thing, it adds like this little bit of extra variation that people don't know, so. All right, swapping over to the other side. Pitch. Basically, it does what it says it does. Slip roll. All right, so this is uh, something that took me years to understand, but slip roll and roll are the same functions, basically, but roll normally just... Let me... What roll does, it does this and then pauses it, pauses the tune and slip roll. does that but keeps the track playing it's a really weird concept i don't know why it's really in there but vinyl break it's bad but as an effect and helix i don't know about this one never use it oh like a reverb that's cool Oh, there's Helix for you. Uh, you can make a little riser with it if you want. <laughs> Learning as we go, huh? Spiral does a little bit same as reverb. Ping pong is a delay. Which you can also use instead of reverb. And your and your set. Echo we already showed you and well delay does what it Well that's the basic mixer thingy. You don't have to use it, but sometimes when you're uh, like mixing hardstyle isn't that challenging to be honest. So normally when DJs get a little bored they do that stuff. So you don't need it, but it's fun to have. So, um, when you're in trouble and you're mixing out of sync or you're like, you, you messed up, you, you selected the wrong track, you can use these things to save yourself. So let's get another example. Let's say, uh, let's swap all the way over to the end drop. Let's say you missed your cue point and you actually still wanna Make it look like you didn't mess up. So then, then what you do is you really quickly take a track. You use the vinyl to get to a point where the song actually starts. So I'm gonna use that reverb thing from before to save ourselves. Say you missed it, so I know you're stressing and we're just... You figured it out now because you had the other tune ready. And at the end, you put that reverb up. And you save yourself. Like that. I've used that so many times, it's crazy. Because sometimes people come up to you or like a photographer wants a nice picture and they get you out of your zone. This is how you save yourself. I did it so many times. I also messed up a couple of times. So, uh, what happened to me a lot is um, 
But when the drop was coming, I was waving my hands. And then when it dropped, I did that. All right, okay, so a summary. Um, you have to know how to count to four. It's not that hard. Um, know the structures of your song. Spend a little time into uh, going through the tracks, uh, figuring out where the drops are, if they're like fake drops. Uh, make sure if you want to do something actual special, make sure they're in key. That's also something not a lot of DJs do. I like to mix in key or like at least that it doesn't sound like it's totally out of key, you know? Um, make sure you don't touch anything by accident. Um, these, these, these CJJs are currently on vinyl mode. Make sure you don't touch this because what vinyl mode does is it emulates as if it has like an actual vinyl thingy. I don't know why it's still there, why it's still called vinyl, but so when you touch it now, the tune stops. So when it does, when you have to turn off, it does not. And you can use this jog wheel to correct or go forward in the song. But when you do that with vinyl mode, you get that, you get the scratchy thing. More do's and don'ts. Um, be kind to your to the next DJ, because uh, as I said before, if you're playing an uh, opening in a club, uh, you don't want to put the next DJ in a difficult position by playing raw all the way or like playing the songs of the DJ that are next to you, which happened to me more often than I uh, would like to admit. I uh, went to Spain once and the DJ before me played all my hits. So, and he was like waving with me like, hey, uh, this tune. And I still had to play. So that's a little, uh, that's a, like unspoken rule of do not play the tracks of the DJ after you. Oh yeah, okay, of course uh, I've been uh, talking up my game by saying I'm doing a masterclass on, well, masterclass, a short intro on DJing. And I'm actually showing you how a decent mix sounds. Well, if I can do one. So let's uh, put myself to the test. Show you guys that I'm actually not full of shit. Um, I'm going to start my set with something cool, yeah? Like that. Also, something for the DJ to do is uh, have a little interaction with the with the crowd. Uh, don't don't be this guy. Be aware of your surroundings. Play a little with the crowd. Come on, where's that tune? So you see me touching a lot of knobs, but I'm not really doing anything. Just looks as if you're doing something. Because that's also important. Appearance. So I'm going to put it all, put it all to use. All the effects. Making sure the other track doesn't mess with this track. The EQ. Making sure it's in the same BPM. Yeah, it is. All right. 
Axel Pro DJ. Still standing. So, big shout out to Corsair. This thing has been around the world already. Uh, I mean, at EDC, someone actually uh, came on stage, jumped, jumped on stage with me, slapped, slapped this thing out of my hands, went like five meters down the stage. I look, still in one, one piece. So, big shout out to the Corsair for making my life a little less complicated because I was buying new headsets literally every three months. Well, thank you guys for joining this short masterclass. I wouldn't call it masterclass. If you really want to get into it, go to Cripsis. He's one of the best DJs I know. But a short intro into how to DJ, how to hard style DJ actually, how to hard style DJ. That's the video title. All right. Thanks for uh, watching, guys, and uh, see you in the next one.